Mammals from eggs. Children learn in school is that one of the defining characteristics of mammals is that they give birth to live young. No one, it seems, told the monotrams. This group of mammals is identified by the fact that they all lay eggs. Today, only five species of monotrams exist, the duck-billed platypus and four species of echidna. Monotreme eggs tend to be small and have a leathery rather than hard shell. The monotreme incubates the eggs for several days until the young hatch. Then, in the case of echidnas, the baby or puggle crawls into its mother's pouch. Compared to other mammals, the newly hatched baby is tiny and practically helpless. For several months inside the pouch, the puggle laps up milk that is produced from mammary glands in the skin. Eventually, the puggle is developed enough for the mother to place it in a burrow, where she will return to feed it every several days until it's mature enough to survive on its own. Mouth brooders. Fish are not always known for their parenting prowess. Often eggs are released, fertilized, and the young left to fend for themselves. It is true that some species will defend their eggs and young, but for some fish it is just too risky to leave them alone at all. These fish, known as mouth brooders, carry their eggs in their mouths until they hatch and will often keep their young there well afterward. In some species, like the pearly jawfish, it is the father who will have a mouthful of eggs. For the duration of their development, he will hold on to them, unable to feed himself until they hatch. African kyclids are maternal mouth brooders. The mothers go up to 36 days without feeding. Once the eggs hatch, she will allow the young out to feed themselves, but she can signal them to swim back in for protection if she senses danger. Unfortunately, not even this tactic can always protect their young. The cuckoo catfish attacks chicklids to get them to spit out their eggs. While the mother chicklid is gathering them back up, the catfish deposits her own eggs among them. The catfish eggs hatch more quickly than the kyclids and proceed to feast on the kyclid eggs inside the safety of the mother's mouth. Gastric brooding. Sometimes the mouth simply isn't safe enough for a child to live in. For the gastric brooding frogs, eggs would be kept safe in the stomach. The mother would lay her eggs in the usual fashion but then eat them. Up to 40 eggs would be eaten, though no more than 20 young were ever seen to develop within a mother's stomach. It is possible that the stomach acid digested some of the eggs. To avoid being dissolved, the eggs and the tadpoles that hatched from them produced a mucus which stopped production of the acid, leaving the mother unable to eat while carrying her young. As the young grew, the stomach expanded with them until it took up the majority of the frog's body space. The mother's lungs collapsed to make room, and she had to breathe through her skin. Only after six weeks would the mother release her fully formed young. Unfortunately, the two species of gastric brooding frogs went extinct in the 1980s, but in 2013, scientists took the first steps in returning the frogs to life. Using cloning techniques, they were able to create living embryos. It is hoped that the gastric brooding frog will soon be swallowing her young again. Birth through a pseudopenis. Female spotted hyenas can be hard to spot in the wild. This is not because they are particularly shy, far from it, but because they display what looks awfully like an 18 centimeter penis. In fact, this appendage is a pseudopenis formed from an elongated clitoris. The female pseudopenis does pretty much everything a penis does, even getting erections, but it does not deliver sperm. To have sex, a female hyena must retract her pseudopenis, and the male must deliver his sperm through a channel that runs directly through it. As this is also the birth canal, childbirth in female hyenas can be very traumatic and is definitely not a laughing matter. For a first-time hyena mother, there is an almost 60% chance that the cub will become stuck in the pseudopenis and die. If the cub is not eventually released, this can prove fatal to the mother too. When the first cub is born, it tears the pseudopenis, and a stretchy patch of scar tissue forms that makes subsequent births easier. Why does the female spotted hyena suffer so much to have a pseudopenis? As of yet, no researchers have come up with a compelling explanation. Male birth. In most species where eggs are cared for within the body, it is the mother who takes responsibility for nurturing them. For seahorses, pipefish, and leafy sea dragons, it is left to the fathers to get their offspring from eggs to hatchlings. All these fish perform lengthy mating rituals which involve the male and female wriggling and dancing for hours together. It is thought that their motions allow them to synchronize movements, enabling the female to accurately deposit her eggs into a pouch on the male before swimming away. In male seahorses, the eggs are then fertilized and surrounded by fleshy tissue that regulates oxygen and nutrition for the eggs. The male can swell to a much greater than normal size, as up to 2,500 eggs develop within him. 
When the young are all hatched, the male with use muscle contractions to spill the tiny hatchlings out into the ocean. At this point, he is ready for his next batch of young and takes no interest in the babies he has just carried. Under the skin, the Suriname toad, Papa Pipa, is an unusually protective mother. Used to hiding from predators at the bottom of bodies of water, it will not allow its offspring to simply swim about until they are completely ready to survive on their own. When a male Suriname toad is ready to breed, it will signal its readiness by making a clicking sound with a bone in its throat. Once a female emerges, the male will cling to her back for up to 12 hours as they swim in flipping circles through the water. This allows the male to fertilize the eggs and hold them against the mother's back. Why is it important that the eggs remain against the mother's back? Because it is where they will stay until they are fully developed. The mother will grow skin over the eggs and trap them within her flesh. As the young grow, they can be seen moving and quivering under the flesh. The Suriname toad will not even allow its babies to emerge as tadpoles. When the young have developed into toadlets, they will punch their way out of their mother and swim off as fully independent beings, leaving her with massive holes in her back. Eating siblings. The least you can hope for from life is that the struggle for survival will wait until after your birth. In nature, though, you can never rest easy, not even within your mother. A sand tiger shark may start with as many as 12 fertilized eggs inside her, but usually only two will emerge. Once the eggs hatch, the largest baby sharks will kill and eat their brothers and sisters. This is called intrauterine cannibalism. This act of cannibalism allows the two survivors, held in the right and left uteri, to develop into roughly one meter long newborns able to survive on their own. The mother also provides unfertilized eggs for the baby sharks to eat during their nine-month gestation. This method of motherhood gives the sand tiger shark the best chance of having strong offspring. The mother will mate with a number of males, but by allowing her children to eat each other in utero, only those with the best genes will survive. Efficient killers. Parasitic wasps are incredibly common and target a huge number of other invertebrates. From spiders to butterflies to other parasitic wasps, they will hunt them down and lay their eggs within the still living bodies of their prey. Some will paralyze their prey with venom, leaving them unable to move as the wasps' larvae devour it. Others will attack caterpillars so that their own eggs can benefit from the caterpillar's continued feeding. The larvae will often release chemicals that control the mind of their host to give them the best chance of survival, such as making a host spider spin them a cocoon. Whatever the host, the endpoint is the same. Something you do not want to look too closely at is coming bursting out of you. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.